want you to turn to the book of Judges. Book of Judges, chapter 6, and we're not going to read all of it this morning. We're just going to read one scripture over there. But it's the story of a man by the name of Samson. No, Gideon. A man by the name of Gideon. And the Bible says in Judges chapter 6, reading from verse 11, it says, The angel of the Lord came and sat down at the oak of Oprah that belonged to Joash the Abizrite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press. Now, you normally thresh wheat in an elevated area where the wind can blow, not in a hollow. This was a wine press. It was in a hollow. Um, because to keep it from the Midianites, these were the people that had come along and um, taken over the, the country, and they were robbing and they were stealing everything. And uh, the Bible says that uh, many of the Israelites were hiding away in caves. And this guy was secretly trying to make a living for his family. In other words, to have wheat, food. And the Lord appeared to Gideon and said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Now, I want you to imagine God pitching up at you in a church service like this and looking at you and saying, James, you're a mighty warrior. Can you imagine God calling you? Well, it's wonderful, Kathy. We want to just bless you, Kathy. Oh, wonderful. You go and do that. You're a mighty warrior woman. You know, I just want to sit over here in church and, and you know what? I'm going to be a little bit quiet, you know. Um, but imagine like this guy. God comes to him and says to him, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. And not all of God's visits are like goosebump stuff. Some of, God's some of God's visits are very challenging. Go ask Uncle Gideon. The next minute he found himself being called into action way over his ability. If I've got to ask you to do something within your ability, hey, who needs God? Who needs to be even called to do it? If I've got to say, come up to you and say, hey, listen, I want you to come and sing over here now. Um, and you know what? You've sung before a whole lot of people and you've got a wonderful voice and you're used to singing in front of people. Um, you know, hey, why haven't you asked me in the past? You've got all this ability. But this man was asked to do something and he looked at it, and man, he was punching out of his weight division. In boxing, um, the, they, they, they categorize you according to weight. And the least weight is a flyweight, not me. I'm very upset right now. A flyweight is 49 kilograms fly weight is less than a lot of you over here a fly weight is nothing 49 kilograms now imagine putting a 49 kilograms in the, the ring with 139 kilograms suicide there's trouble in the land you out of your league and this is exactly what happens to Gideon. He gets put in a place. God comes to visit him and says to him, Hey, you, the Lord is with you. 
mighty warrior. And I want you just to listen a little bit to this man's reply. The way he treats this greeting. Verses 12 and 13. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. And the first thing he says in verse 13 is, But. But. But, sir. If the Lord is with us, why has all these things happened to us? Where are all the wonders that our forefathers told us about and said, Did not the Lord bring us in, out of the land of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us. And He has handed us over to the Midianites. If God had been helping us, if God had been with us, why are all these bad things happening why are the muslims so successful why are they so rich why are all these things happening in our country when it comes to corruption and this and that and, and why this and why that if god was for us in actual fact um you know what? Everybody sits in church nowadays, and I listen to all the older people, and they tell us all about the things that happened in the past. They tell us about the miracles that happened then, and the miracles that, that they had in their young days, and all the things that used to happen. But you know what? I don't see any of that happening now in my day and my age. And therefore, I draw a conclusion, Mr. God Visitor, that God is not with us. That I cannot be a mighty warrior. That God has abandoned us. God has walked away from us and He's no longer interested in us. That's the first reaction that Gideon had to this greeting of God speaking to him and calling him and saying to him, I am with you, mighty warrior. The next thing that this man says in, is, I find in verse 15, but the Lord, but Lord, Gideon asked, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. God comes along, visits a man, says to him, I am with you, mighty warrior. Calls him while he's busy threshing wheat, doing something different. He's not out there fighting the Midianites. He's not out there busy getting people agitated on his side to go about and do warfare. No, he's threshing wheat. He's doing something totally different. And God comes along and visits him. The first thing he says to God is, Why are you coming to talk to me? I'm the weakest of the whole lot. Um, you, you know what, um, in my family, my family counts nothing in the neighborhood around over here. In actual fact, there are other people out there that can do a much better job than me anyway. And he begins to list all his reasons why he should not be a warrior and why God should not be with him. Sound a little bit familiar? We like to make all the reasons in the world why God cannot use us. We look at ourselves and we think, my, there's always somebody better to do a job than us. They better equip, better this and better that. They've got 
louder voices than we've got they've got softer voices than we've got they can do things better well i don't have this intellect well i have this intellect and we we kind of weigh all these things up but man when we punching out of our weight when we are being given a, a task to do that god is calling us to do because of a god visit we quickly point out the reasons why this visit should not be happening. And God, why don't you go speak to somebody else? Visit somebody else. Verse 17. Gideon replied, in the Lord's interacting with him all the time. But I'm just highlighting this morning, Gideon, verse 17. If now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it's really you talking to me. Sure. Uh, hello, God, did I hear you properly? <laughs> Uh, wasn't it just me talking to me? I was sitting in church. And, and, uh, and, you, and you know what? Maybe it was just the emotion of the time. And I just heard you talking to me. But, but maybe it's wrong. And now, yes, the angel of the Lord, busy speaking to him. And now he's asking for a sign is this really you? Is this God speaking to me? Now, folks, if you've been around um, God for some time, God loves to just talk softly. We wish that He would just talk loud all the time and it just clears anything that it's God speaking to me many times when God speaks there are so many other voices shouting at the same time and people talking at the same time that we can't hear God and many of the things that God has to say to us doesn't marry up. Hey, I'm the least. You speak to the pastor all the time. You don't speak to the members. In actual fact, I'm not a very good Christian. I'm new in the faith. I'm weak. You shouldn't be talking to me. Please go talk to the pastor. He can preach better next Sunday. And please speak to the elders of the... But don't come talk to me. Is it really God speaking to me? Is it really God visiting with me? Boy, if you've never landed in that situation, then you don't know God. Because I'm telling you now, there are times in my life when I only in hindsight realize, hey, God was speaking to me. But at the time when God was busy speaking, I thought, oh well, so what? There are times when God speaks very clearly and, and, and you know what? He cuts down deep into your conscience and you know, whoa, now you've got to sort something out. You've got to fix this up. You know exactly what to do. But there are other times when God speaks. And you know what? He speaks in such a way that you are uncertain and you think, what is going on now? But there's one thing and I... And just this morning, I want to mention it, that that happens to Gideon when God speaks. When God speaks, one of the things that you're going to know that God is speaking to you, He will always lead you into worshiping His greatness and His bigness. 
God speaks to this man. He says, hey, I, I need to make sure that it's you speaking. They, they land up uh, um, preparing a sacrifice. The angel of the Lord touches the sacrifice and the next minute the sends over there. And now Gideon realizes that, hey, this was God that he was speaking to. And God touches his heart. And at the end of the conversation, Gideon thinks, I'm going to die now. And this is the end of the matter. But in verse 23, God says, speaks to him and the Lord says to him, Peace, do not be afraid. You're not going to die. Verse 24. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord and called it, The Lord is Peace. To this day, it stands in, Ap in Oprah. I like what the century English version says. It says, calm down. Um, the Lord said to Gideon, there's nothing to be afraid of. You're not going to die. Verse 24. So Gideon built an altar of worship to the Lord and called it, the Lord calms our fears. Jehovah Shalom. God of peace, the Lord, peace, His well-being, His prosperity, His health, and His safety is mine. When God begins to speak, God will always give you His peace. And that peace will lead to worshiping God, lifting up His name in 1858 a presbyterian minister by the name of george duffield jr i like all these juniors and seniors i'm going to add senior to mine later um, george jr was an associate of dudley atkins ting T-Y-N-G, I think you pronounce it Ting, who had recently been removed from his Episcopalian, this is 1858, his Episcopalian com um, community for speaking against slavery. Duffield assisted Ting in supporting a revival of evangelism in Pennsylvania. In March 1858, Ting gave a sermon at a YMCA meeting of over 5,000 men. A thousand of these men gave their hearts to Christ. The fo following month, Ting was maimed in a farming accident. Before he died, a few days after the accident, he told his father, Tell my brethren of the ministry, wherever you meet them, to stand up for Jesus. Duffield then wrote the hymn based on those words. At a memorial service for Ting, Duffield gave a sermon based on Ephesians 6 verse 14, stand firm wearing the whole armor of God, and ended it by reciting the new hymn. The hymn published in a Baptist newspaper in 1858. After this publish publication, the hymn was now popular and was sung by both sides in the American Civil War. In other words, America was divided. They were fighting one another. And they were singing this hymn on both sides. Okay? We're going to get to the hymn now. Um, the hymn was also became popular among British revivalists and within public schools in England as a result of the images of Christian militarism in the hymn 
some people object to the hymn and some people do not stand to sing it. The hymn was excluded from a Presbyterian hymnal published in 1990 in order not to offend handicapped people. I was reading this post um, on the history of this hymn and um, in the web page that I was reading that I got this information um, in 2018 there was this post it was by a lady she said we had some 20 year old young men come to our church to lead children and youth in a day camp for the city they politely asked me a 78 year old grandmother what song from the hymnal was my favorite i answered stand up stand up for jesus they had never heard it i gave my testimony of the time in my 20s when i walked into a youth revival meeting in new mexico in the usa the words lift high his royal banner it must not suffer loss called me into full-time ministry back in the 1960s girls could not major in bible okay do you understand what she's saying over there girls could not be ministers of churches girls could not stand out girls could not major in bible and listen to this so i married me a preacher boy and then she ends off her post we have stood for jesus for 57 years put that hymn on How many of you know this hymn? How many have never heard it before? <laughs> stand up, stand up for Jesus, He soldiers of the cross, Lift high His royal banners, It must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, His army He shall lead, Till every foe is vanquished, And Christ is Lord indeed. Second verse, stand up, stand up for Jesus, the trump but call obey forth to the mighty conflict in this his glorious day he that all men now serve him against unburdened foes let courage rise with danger and strength to strength oppose verse 3 stand up stand up for Jesus stand in his strength alone the arm of flesh will fail you you dare not trust your own Put on the gospel armor, each piece put on with prayer. When duty calls or danger, be never wanting them. Stand up, 
Stand up for Jesus, the strife will not be long. This day the noise of battle, the next the victorious song. To him that overcometh, a crown of life shall be. He with the King of glory shall reign eternally. God walked, God walked into a young man's life by the name of Gideon and visited him to stand up. You can look around you and you can tell me all the things that are going wrong in your life. You can tell me all the things that are going wrong in our country. You can tell me all the things that are going wrong in our country, in our world. This morning, I want to see God coming to visit you, and it's time for you to stand up. Stand for Jesus Christ. God's not calling you to take a gun. God's not calling you to take a knife. God's not calling you to get your tongue to lash your enemies. But God wants to touch you with His Spirit so that you will be able to rise up and stand. God, I pray that we will not become confused about standing for Jesus. I pray that you will visit men and women right here this morning during this coming week. Lord, because you, you send angels, yes, to come and tell us stuff, but you use us. You use people. That sometimes we battle to hear, we're uncertain. Sometimes we, we look at our frailties, and sometimes we look at all the problems and all the weaknesses, but we don't see a mighty God, what He sees. God just touch your people this morning that they will be able to stand. Stand up not for their rights. Stand up not for the rights of others, but stand for Jesus. Jesus. Not a soldier of just anything, but a soldier of the cross. The good news of Jesus. And Lord, even as we come to the table of the Lord and we're reminded of your way of doing things, you did it by the cross. And will you touch our hearts and come and visit with us? Amen.